Hello everyone, and welcome to Nick Natter, the show that is not a show, so I don't know why I called it a show. Gotta, gotta work on that intro. Uh, before we get into things, there's chapter times if you want to skip around, because I'm assuming this is going to be a fairly long video. I don't know how, I don't know just how long I'm intending to record for, uh, but I know I've got a lot of topics to get through, a lot of topics. So, um, I, I don't imagine it's going to be particularly short. So, if you want to just skip to your preferred section, because I know not everybody might want to hear every little bit, then we got chapter times in the description, in the little video bar, and on screen somewhere. I haven't figured out what my format for that is going to be. I'm still messing around with different uh, layouts, but I will include uh, chapter times somewhere there. We should probably get into what Nick Natter is now, because if you can't tell, Nick Natter is an off-the-cuff me just talking about stuff. I've got some bullet points to make sure I stay on track, but this is me just rambling. If you can't tell, I'm sure you can tell. I'm not even sure why I'm bothering with it. If you can't tell, anyone with a functioning brain can tell. A little backstory. Uh, Quick Thoughts, that sub-brand of mine, was originally this kind of format for the first two videos on, I think, the Origins trailer and then Origins itself. I just had a bunch of bullet points and then I rattled off thoughts on them based off those bullet points. Um, and I just kind of stopped that format because, especially with that longer Origins one I ended up doing on the full game, I felt... I felt really cheap and like like I was cheating about it. I'm not I'm not entirely sure what the issue was there. It just something about it didn't feel right to me as a format to like make an entire video on something. So I quickly switched it up to just being smaller versions of big main videos but on current topics. And that's the quick thoughts that you've all come to know and love. That's how you got your Mario movie trailer trilogy. But I still like the format of just talking into a microphone relatively unscripted about little things. Uh, and I've recently figured out that that format would be better for smaller topics that I can't see getting an entire video just yet. For example, Five Nights at Freddy's trailer. I don't have enough to say about that to make a full video, or the information we and I have about the Knuckles show. Don't want to make a full little quick thoughts video about that. My, my basic clarification in my head, this is, this is what I classify all my video types as. The main videos are really nice big videos on any given topic that can stand the test of time and are just a nice big complete uh, review of something. Then quick thoughts is that kind of process but on a much smaller scale. I push for about 20 minutes at most. Uh, they are bite-sized versions of the usual kind of video making process and they are specifically focused on upcoming thi upcoming like movies or games or recent movies or games, current trendy stuff, hence the last two being about Ant-Man when that was relevant, and Mario when we just got on the final trailer. That's kind of what Quick Thoughts is. If I have something substantial to say about a current thing, you get a Quick Thoughts. That's, that's that one. And now we have Nick Natter, which is a casual kind of chit chat sort of thing, as you are hearing now with your ears, where I get to cover a variety of little smaller topics that aren't necessarily fit for a big video yet. They might do in the future. I could have enough thoughts about all of these things that we're going to cover that could then become a full video, but right now I don't have enough. Uh, but I still have a couple little things I want to say, so I'm rattling them off in a Nick Natter. Plus, it gives me a chance to interact with the community and sort of chill with them. Like, I asked you guys for some questions uh, a few days ago on my community page. That kind of thing will be keeping up. I intend to keep up the Q&A things. It's just a chance for me to for me to touch base with you guys, and instead of exclusively presenting myself through like tightly edited and combed through like scripts that perfectly illustrate my exact points 
uh, get to be more casual and off the cuff and you can see my mistakes so I'm a bit more human. I'm only human after all, don't put the blame on me. I'll try and cut it out uh, as much as I can. I just did it then. I, I hate how much I do it, but I'm, I'm one of those people that goes, uh, loads. Probably stemming from some kind of imposter syndrome where I'm not uh, very confident in myself yet. This is getting too personal. We should move on to something, shouldn't we? You'll notice if uh, you are also a fan of his that I have accidentally completely ripped off B masks, <laughs> three, um, three video sets, not intentional. Uh, he is one of my biggest inspirations. I, I vibe damn near spiritually with that man. I like everything he says. I'm just like, yes, my God, that is that is what somebody should be saying about something. Uh, his bit on entropy in his Crash 4 video. I don't know if any of you have seen it. I would recommend the video. It's very good. But his bit on entropy was my mind was blown. Uh, watching that because it was like he was putting into words so much that I didn't even know I felt it was just like oh my god that is that is my feelings put into words it was it was great I love B mask uh, and I've completely accidentally ripped him off sorry B mask uh, non intentional I like your stuff yeah. Anyway, we should probably get into the actual topics of the video now. So, uh, Mario's on my mind. Let's a go. So, firstly, uh, I don't know if anyone's even picked up on this, but I've been doing some channel housekeeping as of late. Uh, I unlisted a bunch of old memes and just videos that it don't really represent what I'm about anymore. They were kind of shitty let's plays with some <laughs> some kind of off-color humor that I want to keep to myself a lot more. Uh, no shade against that kind of humor. I love a bunch of YouTubers and comedians that make that kind of stuff. It's just not what I particularly want to put out there anymore. Uh, I also changed out the banner uh, for something that's a lot more representative of my brand now. Uh, and little fun fact for uh, anyone who cares, every single little image in those columns, uh, the franchise shown, the the franchise that has an image there, uh, that, that franchise is planned to get talked about. So we got Tron, Bug Snacks, Minecraft, Crash, they're all on my mind somewhere for some kind of video at some point in the future. Not a lot of details on most of them, but they are floating around in there. I'm hoping I can eventually do a cool thing where like, much like how uh, Marvel swaps out like the footage used in their logo um, when that plays, I think it'd be kind of cool if I can eventually, as I cover enough things in the current set of images, I can switch it out for other franchises that I will cover in the future. I think that'd be kind of fun. Uh, but most importantly, something that was long overdue, I have redesigned my little Nick Knock Sona character. I don't know if he's really a Sona. I should probably explain how this guy came to be, because there's more of a story than you'd think. So, started off when I was... I think 14, uh, didn't know how to use Photoshop. In fact, it wasn't even Photoshop. It was, uh, I don't know if anyone's ever heard of NC Software's PhotoPad. It was that instead, because I, I can afford Photoshop and I still can't, but that's where the glory of the seven seas comes into play. Cough, cough, wink, wink. Uh, I took the Emp Lemon approach. Uh, it specifically, he used a character still in his behind the meme video, I wanna say, where it was a wrestler with his like character's head on top and deep fried to hell. Uh, I was inspired by that approach, so I did this mildly terrible, uh, in fact, entirely terrible Hulk with a Roblox head on. I couldn't think of anything better and I chose that as my representation. Very quickly got bored of it or very quickly felt it didn't work because th not only was there nothing original about it, it's just a hack Photoshop effort. Well, not even Photoshop, but... But also, it's uh, not a very dynamic pose. Like, the Emp Lemon one was posed sort of like he was talking. This guy was just posed like Hulk flexing his muscles. So, I got an at the friend... 
<laughs> I got an at the friend time. I got an at the time friend to do a redesign, or a, sorry, an actual design, to take this little Roblox Photoshop Hulk head thing and turn it into something coherent that actually functions as a character. And that led us to this, which uh, I was pretty happy with. I think it keeps the spirit of the Hulk with a Roblox head on, but it's an actual creation. You could see this guy being a character, but you'll notice he is really built. He's very muscular and they were, that was supposed to be a joke but I forgot that no one else would get it. See, like, I'm, I'm gonna shock everyone listening and say that I'm not the most well-built guy on the planet in real life. Shocker, I know. So then I thought it would be this very funny contrast that, oh, a sort of thin, nerdy guy has a really muscular sona. Oh, isn't that funny? Yeah, everyone laugh. Uh, but I quickly realized that without that context, that nobody but me and that friend had. It just looks like I'm being really egotistical, giving my representative this like six pack built look. It just comes off like I'm stroking some non-existent ego. So I very quickly wanted to change that. Uh, at this point, the friend and I had split ways. So I was trying to learn how to draw the guy myself. Oh, the character, not the, not the friend. Uh, and basically, it, it, it came down to laziness, almost. I, I just didn't feel like drawing all the little bits and details on that design. Like the little little curves and the little six pack and stuff. So I very quickly started making him a lot more noodle limbed, simply to make it easier to draw. And obviously instantly removed the muscle aspect. And so at that point there was kind of no need for the jacket with like the rest of the body showing because uh, the gag of the muscles no longer existed. So I kind of started covering him up. I gave him a shirt, uh, the hair. I didn't want to draw the hair and head separately. So I just kind of started merging them and uh, I, I made his head a bit more square to keep more in line with the Roblox head originally. Uh, um, I'm hopefully putting up some pictures I can find midway through the process of me drawing him throughout the years so that you get a better idea of what I'm talking about because I'm not really doing the process justice uh, rambling off about it. Uh, but all of that eventually led to this design, which we've got now, which I'm pretty happy with. I think it's the right amount of cartoony, I think all the proportions are pretty good. I, I am much happier with this guy as a representative for my channel. Uh, he's got the right amount of like sincerity and also deviousness. I feel like this guy would be a, a darn little goober. Oh, and for clarification's sake, uh, because this will become important in the future, uh, I mentioned Sona back there. Th this guy isn't me. He's his own little character that just happens to represent my channel and is the closest thing to representing me. So I might use him to represent myself here and there, or at least as my on-screen representation. And I, I want you to think of my channel when you think of him, but he's more of like a mascot than an outright Sona, I think. He he's his own little character. I, I look at him and imagine he has a very different personality from mine. Uh, I Yeah, I don't see us as the same thing. I think it's more just a symbiotic relationship where we are both part of the uh, wider Nick Knock brand. Basically, this is my long-winded way of saying if you want to draw porn, you're fucking free to. I don't know particularly why you'd want to, there's nothing too special about him, but if you want to give him a big old stick, go right ahead. I'll I'll appreciate it. It's fan art. <laughs> it, it, it's fan art at the end of the day. Uh, though that said, I'm not entirely sold on the colours yet. Uh, I, I've tried out a couple different uh, color schemes and I haven't particularly found my favorite yet or the favorite uh, So that might change slightly over time, but generally generally like proportion wise and the general design traits I'm happy with them. This is this is my guy for the foreseeable future Yeah, so that's uh, some of the house cleaning. I've been up to privated a bunch of old videos to try and make it more cl clear what my brand is now uh, did the same thing with the banner and changed up my Sona dude uh, for much the same reasons. So that's what I've been up to 
on the channel, but what about what's gonna be on the channel? <laughs> hey, in terms of videos, what, uh, what about that? Uh, specifically, the fucking video I promised a month ago. Where's that? What's going on with that, huh? Let's get into that. Okay, so th the long and short is it's coming. It's just taking longer than I expected. That's basically it. Uh, let's move on. No, um... <laughs> I'd hoped to be a bit further along in the process by now. Uh, I was hoping to consistently post on the community tab uh, progress, like little uh, pictures of the timeline with like, hey, 20%, 30%, 40%, etc. And I do intend to start doing that once I get a bit further along, but I am not that far along yet. I am with audio. I've got a nice bit of audio done. A very long bit of audio done but visuals are really lacking because I, I I finally got all the equipment necessary to record my own gameplay but I have never done that before so figuring out the right OBS settings and the right Elgato settings and all that fun stuff uh, was taking a lot longer than anticipated and then I have to record the entirety of Frontiers which as anyone who's played it will know, it's not exactly a short game. <laughs> so to get all the footage I want, uh, all the little shots and the little actions I want to get, you know, that's a lengthy amount to record. So uh, I'm just making my way through all of that, uh, trying to slowly fill in, uh, trying to slowly fill in the audio where I can. Uh, it, it is going. It's going slower than I would have hoped. Uh, I would hope to be a bit further along by now, but it is going. Uh, it's, it's simply a matter of time at this point. I, I, I can make it. I've got enough done to where I can make it. It just is gonna take a little bit. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying. I'm doing something for it every single day, big or small. I'm, I am making sure I do something on that video every single passing day. So, yeah. I am hoping on a fucking women of prayer that I can get this done before we get the second uh, major DLC update for Sonic's birthday because some of the, some of the language Kishimoto's been using on Twitter uh, kind of implies it might make some fundamental changes to the game that change sort of how we play it. Uh, which have the potential to invalidate a large number of my points. So that'll be very fun if that ends up happening, and knowing my luck, it will. So I'm hoping to get the video out before that update comes out, but I don't think that's gonna happen. It might if, by some miracle, I can just get a lot of do stuff done very quickly. I don't think that's gonna happen, but it's not wholly out of the realm of possibility either, so I guess there's a bit of a time frame for how far along in the video I am. At, at worst, I'll just put a little disclaimer at the start saying that this was written and recorded before that update. It'll be annoying if I have to do that, but oh well. Anyway, that's Frontiers. That's the progress with Frontiers right now. It is coming along. It's coming along slower than I wanted, but it is coming along and it will be in your hands. Kind of, you don't really hold it in your hands. Unless you watch it on your phone, I guess. But it will be in your hands soon enough. I, the second I have a more concrete, the second I have more concrete progress or a release date, I'll let you all know. Uh, but you have been waiting a while, a whole month in fact, so I'll, I'll give you a couple little clips from it that are done uh, so, you, so you have something for your, for your patience, which I am very thankful for. Uh, I hope it can deliver for everyone who's waiting and excited for it. Here's a couple little clips. Sonic's strengths lie in his lower half. Do not take that out of context. His legs are what enable him to run. They're more noticeable in a silhouette. They're his overarching gimmick. They're what set him apart from the competition. So the speed and agility they provide should always be the focus, at least when it comes to designing any gameplay systems. In theory, this thing should be on equal footing with or outright surpass the boost thanks to the versatility it offers, but I, no. Also, the Hermit Coco kind of looks like Master Eon. Greetings, Portal Master. I am Eon, and I have come to guide you on a great journey. But hey, that's Frontiers, but what about the other Sonic thing coming out this year? Uh, at least that we know of, because there's that rumoured uh, spin-off 2D game. But the confirmed thing is that bad, shitty Knuckles show 
the me being the world's I think biggest Sonic movie hater. You know, I I have some thoughts on. So Knuckles show or Knuckles the Echidna, I guess it was never going to be called anything fun, was it? Uh, that got announced a while back and announced, announced, not released. It, it not released. That was the point of my video, guys. I, I didn't say the show couldn't be announced this year. I said it wouldn't be released this year because they hadn't filmed it in 2022. And so far, that's looking to be 100% true. And yeah, it, it could release like right at the end of the year. But a, a, a if it releases anywhere in December, that barely counts. I mean, yes, it technically counts. It did release in 2023, but we're not counting that, are we? Sonic Prime barely released in 2022. Nobody thinks of that as a 2022 Sonic thing because it released so late into the year. Like, if, if Knuckles hits us any later than December 20th or something, my point will stand. I won the argument. I particularly hated this reveal too. I'm not really sure what it is. Maybe it's the prop that is, you know is gonna mean fuck all in the actual show. It's just gonna be like an easter egg. He's gonna put it on for one scene. It'll, maybe it'll be part of a disguise. Uh, but that's the thing they used to announce the show because they know fans will see it and go, Oh, it's the hat. It's the OVA hat. Wow, they really care, guys. They are playing on your nostalgia. They are using you. Oh, uh, Christ. And then you've got all the fucking social media accounts, like, tweeting out the cringiest things uh, that seem, like, tangentially related to the show just to get some kind of re I, I hate- I hate this. I hate this. Now, in terms of plots and whatnot, I, I don't actually have much to say right now. We've only gotten a synopsis, so I'm holding out some thoughts until we see, you know, a more concrete thing, be that an episode or a trailer or whatnot. Uh, I mean, it doesn't sound anything good. It, it, it sounds like entirely content for content's sake because they announced a Knuckles show, and so now they have to make something about that show that they announced already. Uh, for budgetary reasons, it was always going to be set entirely on Earth. Those of you expecting a little animated trek throughout Sonic's worlds, more power to you. That was never in the cards. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, they're using Wade. Like, I, I've got nothing against him inherently. He's fine in the movies, I guess. He's not particularly funny, but that's a, that's a subjective thing, I suppose. But like... He wouldn't have been my first choice for someone to pair Knuckles up with. I think Maddie's in it, you know, Tika Sumter. That would be more interesting to me, that... F fucking Wade! <laughs> it's, it's the comic relief, like, tertiary character. What what point does this serve? This feels like a completely nothing project. I, I don't think anyone had a particularly strong idea for a Knuckles show. I don't think anyone ran into Paramount's office and chucked down a script and gave him a pitch and was like, oh, we've got to make this Knuckles show. I have an idea here. No, I think Paramount announced a Knuckles show because they want to flesh out this stupid universe idea. And so they wrangled together some writers to make that show a thing. I, I don't think there was any creative spark to the initial planning here. Like, I'm sure there's a lot of hard work being put in. In fact, I know there is. We'll get to that in a second. But it, it, the core idea doesn't feel like it was anyone's particular passion, you know? And that is including all of the extra details I am aware of from an insider source. Because, yeah, that's a thing that happened. Someone contacted me that has since proven to be reputable. Reputable. S someone working on the show. Uh, that I am not going to give any more details about because they are legitimate and I don't want to get them in trouble. <laughs> but yeah, they shared stuff with me. I knew what that logo looked like for like two weeks before all the rest of you saw it. I saw it two weeks early. I, I saw a couple other things and I've heard some other interesting details. Uh, I can't really substantiate any of this, obviously, because that would require me showing and explaining exactly what I know, which will then get the person in trouble for sharing that. So, uh, I, I can't really prove this claim. You're just gonna have to trust me. I, I have no reason to lie about it. It just makes me look like a dick if I, if I lie about this stuff. Uh, but hey, believe what you want to believe. I think the person who shared it with me is a fairly active watcher of my stuff. That's what I gleaned from our conversations. So 
uh, person, if you're watching, you know who you are. Thank you very much for what you've shared with me. It's it's been very informative, and I'm I'm thankful for your intel. It's it's cool. Thank you. Now again, won't get into much of what I've heard. I will talk in some very broad strokes. Uh, so all I'll really say is. I've seen and heard some more details about the show. There is like more to that synopsis because I know everyone was like hoping it was just the first episode or something. There is more to that synopsis. They aren't quite giving the full scope of the show, but the heart and soul of it is very much Knuckles and Wade pissing about it, that, that core concept that people don't like the idea of, of Knuckles and Wade for an entire show partnering up. That is very much the heart of the show. There's more surrounding that, and this is, in plot, this is actually like eerily similar to movie one, actually. But the 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 core of the show is Knuckles and Wade. So if you weren't looking forward to that, I don't know, strap in. As most of you watching will know, I am not the biggest fan of the movies. I do not like the direction they've gone in at all. I would near say I despise the direction they've gone in. However, I did agree with the majority that Movie 2 ended in a really good spot to introduce Rouge in the Knuckles series. You know, she could have shown up, stole the emerald, Knuckles gives chase, uh, not necessarily across different planets because they wouldn't have the budget for that, but across Earth. Um, and you know, you would have introduced Rouge, set her up for Movie 3. I thought that was a really smart idea and I was genuinely pretty sure that was the way that Knuckles would go. Because they've been making a big uh, spiel about, oh, it's connected into Sonic Movie 3 because we're doing a universe because everything has to be a universe nowadays. So I was fairly sure they were going to do something like that, but, but no, <laughs> no. We have a villain, but it's no Rouge. <laughs> I could already tell you exactly how this is going to tie into Movie 3 and how that villain ties in, but it's it's in a very predictable way. It's something. <laughs> I, I don't know if people are going to really care for it. It's something. <laughs> yeah, as I said earlier, it, it just sounds like a production for production's sake. They'd already announced the Knuckles show, so then they had to actually make something with that copyright. I I don't have much faith in this being anything more than like content to kill a half hour. It's so nothingy from what I'm seeing. Uh, they're doing that fucking thing again. You know, you know how Green Hills is called Green Hills, but it has fuck all to do with Green Hill, except for the most surface level thing of, oh, it's a green field, so let's call it Green Hill. The fans will love that we use the thing from the games with no real rhyme or reason. They're doing another one of them, not gonna specify, obviously, but there's another one like that. Uh, so if you didn't like that, strap in, because it seems like this way of making the Sonic movie production is far from over. Mario just showed us what you fucking people should actually be aiming for with your adaptations, but no, you you keep setting it on bog standard earth and fucking the characters and giving the most gener generic things like these these ever so tangentially related names. I. I hate this universe, man. I hate this universe. At least the crew had fun shooting it. I I've heard nothing bad about the actual production process from my from my insider person. Yeah, they've had nothing but good things to say about the actual process of shooting the show and all that. I, I hear good things about uh, the, like the staff and whatnot, so that's good. I, I, I despise the end result, but I have no qualms with the people just trying to do their jobs and get that bag. You know, you, you guys do good, keep it up. Even the CGI people, because it was a bit more rushed in movie two, there were a lot of little uh, clips and bits that were clearly not finished and just kind of swept under the rug, but that's not your fault. The bits that were finished looked very good. That's clearly the fucktards up top at Paramount who are pushing for quicker release dates that are rushing you guys. And I have no doubts we'll see a lot of the same in Knuckles. I imagine that CGI will look... Because, you know, they don't have the budget of a movie, or at least I would assume they don't. So I imagine the CG will be a bit lesser quality. And from what I hear, there's a bit of a rush to try and get it out this year to, to try and beat that allegation. Uh, so the CGI might be a bit spotty, but don't blame the VFX artists. It is, it is never their fault. It is absolutely the people up top. Blame them. Anyway, that's Knuckles. Uh, I'm, 
not interested at all. I can't even say I'm interested to see how bad it is, because like with the movies, those are big tentpole movies that could actually affect the brand, and it matters if they're done poorly. This is a little spin-off knuckle show on some streaming service no one asked for or cares about. I, I, I don't have the care to give it any care. <laughs> Uh, so I might cover it uh, when we get a trailer or something, if if it looks at all interesting to me in a good or bad way. I might actually entirely skip this one. Like, I, <laughs> I, I gotta save this movie hate for three, and then the entire like little trilogy review I plan to do. I'll probably cover Knuckles in there because I want to cover the entire Sonic Cinematic Universe in one fell swoop. But yeah, I. I have no enthusiasm either way for the Knuckles show, so you might not hear all of anything about it from me for a while. I I just don't care, man. Th these things are so bland and generic and Hollywoody and corporate. I I don't have the care. We've got Mario now. We have good video game adaptation stuff. Detective Pikachu was alright. I, I didn't like it, but that's because I'm not big into Pokemon, so it didn't do anything for me. But Mario I like, and we have Mario now. I. I, I don't have to care about the Sonic stuff anymore, and I really don't care about Knuckles right now. So, at the very least, I'll probably talk about a trailer or something in a future Nick Natter. I can at least promise that. I'm sure I'll have some thoughts I want to get out there, but I might not make a dedicated video on it for a long while, <laughs> so... Sorry. Anyway, yeah, so that's Knuckles, and that is a thing a film company made. Now, speaking of another thing that a film company made, her, 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 her. Have you seen the new FNAF trailer? Uh, so I haven't talked about it on this channel, like, at all, uh, but, I, but I'm something of a FNAF fan. I, uh, maybe not the most hardcore on the planet. I'm, I'm no Dorco or MatPat or... I don't know if Markiplier is really a fan, I don't know if he even likes the series at this point, but I'm not quite any of them, but, you know, I, I enjoy a, a good old bit of FNAF at Freddy's. Ah, oh, that Jack Black TikTok lives rent-free in my head. I got really excited at the Help Wanted 2 announcement at the PlayStation Showcase, if that's any indication of my level of fanness. So I was kind of cautiously optimistic for uh, the Five Nights at Freddy's movie, I can't say I had too much faith, it's had such a rocky production and Scott seems very specific about what he wants in the movie and with how complicated the laws gotten in the recent games I was kind of worried that meant like Remnant and the Mimic and Agony and all this shit that I do not keep up with because I don't read the books but uh, I, th I was worried a lot of that was gonna kind of bleed into the script. Uh, when it should be just entirely focused around that first game's concept of just a restaurant with a couple robots that are haunted by some dead kids because Matthew Lillard stabbed them. Uh, but yeah, but then we got Blumhouse on board. They are absolutely the right guys to go with. The Jim Henson Creature Shop doing the animatronics, that's, that's great. Uh, and then, yeah, again, Matthew Lillard. That's, that's a genuinely wonderful casting. Uh, so things were starting to look up, but I still wasn't convinced, you know, it's... Sonic had a lot of good production decisions, but that turned out a certain way. Uh, and then we got the trailer, well we got the leaked trailer, which I didn't think too fondly of, but it, it was a leaked trailer, you know, it, maybe things were gonna change, maybe it was just a bad representation. So then we got the official trailer, and oh no, it I, I do not like this. It's very weird, because it's doing like the exact thing I advocate for, you know, being as faithful as possible. Uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But something about this just looks really off to me, and borderline terrible. I can't pinpoint it to save my life, and it is mildly tearing me apart, cause, cause, cause it's doing it right, but something about it looks oh so wrong. <laughs> One of the only things I can immediately point to as a dumb bad decision is the red eyes. Yeah, I'm part of the camp that doesn't like them, and is gonna complain, cause they look bad. <laughs> It's just such a generic, like, lazy, tropey way to con to convey the oh, they're evil, uh, evil robots, guys. Oh, it's it's a kid would make that. A a child would would draw that. <laughs> it's it's such a generic trope. Ideally, you do the white eyes. 
because that's the thing from the games and it looks better. But if you had to go with the red eyes, at least do it like the silver eyes cover. Because that looks- you compare those two images and there's not even a competition. It looks so much better done when it's just the little pupils. I think that might be part of it. Everything I'm seeing, it just feels like a more Hollywood-fied version of something. Like it's masquerading, because it's- the, the, the pizzeria, the animatronics and whatnot, they all look spot on. But it feels like they're masquerading a more basic, generic- horror movie. Like, they've got the whole, oh, oh, the animatronics will stuff you in a shoot at night thing, but it's, but it's this more obvious, like, gory, saw trap-esque thing. Uh, they've got the possessed kids, but they're acting like your fucking stereotypical poltergeists. Uh, even, even the restaurant itself, like, maybe I'm wrong here, but I always got the impression that Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, like even even before all the murders and stuff to actually bring its reputation down, um, when it was just a happy little children's restaurant, uh, it was still a cheap and tacky piece of shit. Like like you have that quote. I forget I forget entirely where it came from, but you have that quote of the pizza tasting like cardboard. Like I I thought the idea was Fazbear Entertainment are so cheap, just anyway that the restaurant was still garbage. But it was, um, it was affordable garbage, so it was a popular place. Uh, and then all the murders happen, and because they're so cheap, they keep the place open. They know the bodies are in there, or at least they figure that out eventually. Uh, but they keep the restaurant open, they keep, they keep running, that, that's why you need a security guard, because it's still a restaurant that is open and running, so you need a security person there to do that job. And it just so happens that they're haunted and trying to kill you. Uh, but here it's closed, and it's like that. That flashback. Maybe, maybe that's just a tape that's trying to hype up the place more than it actually is. But that tape certainly gives off the impression that it genuinely was a happy little, wonderfully beloved children's establishment that uh, that has now fallen into ruin because it's closed. And it's like that's more generic than what was present in the original games. And in fact, and FNAF fans are gonna fucking hate me for saying this, but in fact, I have seen a better version of that. It's called Willy's Wonderland. So yeah, not particularly vibing with that. Also, it is something about the animatronics. I don't know what it is. Maybe I'm just desensitized to them, but they feel very cheap to me. There is, there is something very like, fake and cheap and there's something about I can't put my finger on it almost to any degree but there is something about those animatronics that is just rubbing me the wrong way entirely like there's there's that one shot of um Freddy turning in the in the old VHS commercial where he's like singing and Christ I can feel the guy inside of the suit there moving their body like that and and if there isn't any and if there isn't anyone and that it is actual animatronic movement, ooh ooh uh, ooh ooh uh oh that's that's not good. And then everyone's trying to combat that by saying like, oh, it's a FNAF movie. It was always going to be goofy and silly. Why why are you trying to take it seriously? And conveniently ignoring all the scenes where the movie itself is clearly trying to take itself seriously. But but hey, whatever. But that kind of misses that in the original few games, like. The animatronics became part of the joke later on in Sister Location onwards, there was a push to make the robots themselves more funny. But in the first few games that this one is heavily based on, uh, the animatronics were treated dead seriously. Like yeah, you had signs and phone guy dialogue that was comedic, but the animatronics themselves were just treated as a genuine serious threat, so I'm not sure where people are getting all of this, oh it was goofy from... No, the robots can be very serious. I just don't get that vibe here. Like, maybe I really have just seen too many memes with those original designs. Uh, Stop Chewing is pretty good. I like that one. But no, because if you go back to FNAF 1 and look at some of the stills from that, they still look very creepy and unnerving. These designs are just so reliant on very careful positioning and lighting to really get effective scares out of them. Uh, th that's kind of part of the charm, that's kind of why they work so well, is because at the wrong angles they can look like goofy funny little kids characters, but if you light them and pose them just right, you can make them look really damn creepy.
Like, my alarm bells were set off when I saw their recreation of the camera shot, with uh, Bonnie to the left and Freddy to the right and Chica at the back and they're all draped in shadows. Because uh, that's- they're trying to do the thing from the games. That's in the game. They're trying to do that, like, beat for beat. It's like, oh, look, we did a movie version of the thing from the game. That's so cool. But- but they're missing all of the, like, lighting work that makes that shot work. <laughs> like, you can still see Bonnie's eyes. It, it's not blacked out like it is in the game. Freddy is completely draped in shadow. Like, you, you can't make out anything of him. Whereas in the game, you could still see a silhouette. Uh, they, they just seem to have completely zero understanding of why that shot was scary. They're just recreating it uh, quite closely without understanding all the little nuances of what made that work. Which feels like the entire movie to me, right now at least. It, it just It's just looking like a really, really, really faithful skin masquerading a lesser, more generic horror... B movie that doesn't understand half of why Five Nights at Freddy's was scary in the first place. Because uh, another one is that the animatronics, uh, they rely on stillness as well. They they can't move too much or else <clears throat> they become just as goofy. Uh, and I don't think there's a single shot in this trailer that entirely shows off their stillness. Because even the ones where they are still and motionless, the camera's moving. Like, and so there's still a sense of movement surrounding the animatronics. The, yeah. Yeah, I'm just- I'm not vibing with this at all right now. And it's a damn shame, because I, I didn't think it would be too, too hard to make work. I, 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 I could kind of see how you could do a FNAF movie, but doesn't look like we're getting that. At least right now, we've still got more trailers and the actual movie to come out, so... Hopefully my opinion improves, but right now, sorry guys, I'm I'm not vibing with this. It's sorry. Uh, speaking of demons and spooky stuff and spooky scary skeletons send shivers down your spine, uh, I finally got around to watching Hell of a Boss. Not that this is related to much of anything, but I finally watched Hell of a Boss and it's cool. I like it. I watched the pilot way back when it first came out. Because I liked has -been. Uh I'm, I'm looking forward to the has -been show. Uh, and, and I really liked the pilot, I liked what I saw. I just never got around to watching the full show until recently. It's, it's always been on my radar, I just didn't get to it. And yeah, I, I, I watched it and I finally get the hype. This thing is, is very, very good. I, I really enjoy the show. It's got just the right amount of episodic mixed with just the right amount of story to where it's not like bogged down with drama, you can still have fun with it, but it's got the right amount of drama to keep you invested a bit more than an episodic show might. I, I, I just really like the characters, they're very fun. You could, you could put them in almost any situation and it would be fun to watch. Uh, the classic litmus test is always, is it fun to see X character going and buying groceries? And if it is, then you've passed the bill, and these guys have passed the bill. I would very much watch IMP go buy some groceries. That should be an episode, in fact. I especially like Moxie and Millie. I, I know that's the sort of generic, uwu, cutesy answer, but I, I don't know, man. I, I take my joys where I can get it, and they're nice. It's cute. It's nice seeing a couple in a show like this not be, oh, they hate each other, or, you know, oh, bogged down with drama, relationship drama. It's nice seeing two that just unabashedly love each other and support each other. That's cute. That's nice. I like it. Definitely prefer season one though. I, I am part of the camp that uh, that thinks season two has dropped the ball a little bit. Not as much as everyone else is saying. I, I don't think it's some massive dip in quality. I, I think it's generally still all there. It just doesn't feel quite as tightly woven as season one. It feels like they've forgotten where some characters were meant to be at. It seems like they entirely skipped over what happened between Stolas and uh, Blitz, which is a bit weird. I don't know why you wouldn't show that. That just feels very unsatisfying. Uh, they made Stella very one note when it was kind of implied she was more than that. I, I, I'm just not vibing with season two as much. Sorry. I did really like the one with Moxie's dad though. I don't know why people didn't like that. I really enjoyed the episode. Like I understand, um, I understand the plot holes that people have brought up. I forget entirely what they are, but I know people have brought up some good ones. But 
But personally, if I if I can still get invested, I, I don't care too much about plot holes. Like, I'll bring them up and point and laugh as like, lol, yeah, that's dumb, why did you let that in? But it, it doesn't affect my enjoyment too much, and it didn't with that one. I thought that was a pretty strong episode. Uh, and that is where I'm going to leave talking about Has Been and Hell of a Boss and anything Fifty Pop has made, because I have seen how ravenous that fan base is. I thought Sonic was bad, but no, Hell of a is hell of a worse. Uh, and I don't want to particularly poke the bear there, so I'm just going to say my bit here in that I like Hell of a Boss. I thought season 2 was slightly drop off in quality, but not that much. I still quite like the show. Don't drive me to suicide, please. Yeah, don't expect me to cover any of her shows in an actual video anytime soon. I don't want to deal with that. <laughs> uh, sorry, the best you're gonna get is some more quick thoughts like this in a future Nick Natter. It's sorry. Uh, anyway, swiftly moving on to something I will talk about with full confidence, loudly and proudly, Crash Team fucking Rumble. I'm a pretty big Crash guy, I think I've, I think I've mentioned this once or twice. Uh, so I was already, like, fairly interested in Rumble, just on the basis of being a Crash guy, uh, but then we had the two years of build-up and speculation, where we knew the code name of Wumper League, uh, and then we got the actual trailer and it finally got publicly announced and we started seeing gameplay and promotional stuff and like I, I was fairly excited it looked kind of fun it, it didn't look like anything crazy but it, it looked all right a and then uh, I played the beta and holy fuck I am in love with this game I I, I I cannot fathom how much more fun it is than it looks because it looks really kind of boring I'll, I'll grant you uh, I, I, I look at gameplay, even after playing it, you can look at the gameplay and just think, man, yeah, it, it doesn't look fun. Frontiers is kind of the same, it's not the most engaging to look at. There, there should really be some kind of study done into this, because there's some games where they just out of the gate look fun, and you can see why someone would enjoy them, but then there's others that don't, and you have to get a feel for it yourself. It's very interesting, the disparity there. Anyway, Rumble is one of those. It. I, I get it, it might not look all too interesting. Tr oh, it's so fun. If if you've got 30 quid to spare and you're up for paying for an online subscription to, pay, to play it, I cannot recommend it enough. Obviously, you have to enjoy these kind of online games, you know, your Fortnite, your Fall Guys, your Battle Pass kind of games. You have to enjoy them. But if you fit that criteria, if you fit that criteria, I cannot recommend Rumble enough. So, so very fun. It, it so wonderfully takes the core Crash experience and transforms that into a multiplayer game. It's, oh my god, it's so good. I, I, I assume they're not going to see this uh, unless we get some very bored employee. But hey, Toys for Bob, thank you for making this game. It's so fun. It is, it is my multiplayer game. I've never quite had a multiplayer game that I can get super into. Fall Guys is close. I really like that one, but it's still not like mine. I came into that two years late. But this one, this is mine. I love this one. And I'm going to be here from day one playing this. It looks, it looks so good. I am so excited for the finished release. I, I, I'm not really bothering describing the game much because it is so just one of those you have to play to really get it. So I'm just going to recommend you scan around for if they do any like free weekends or something where you can give the game a shot. Really, you owe it to yourself to try it. It's so much more fun than it looks. Give it a shot. Uh, I I'm just excited for the full release because we got five characters in the beta and there's nine now confirmed for launch plus there's a couple others like Ripperoo and Spyro and Ripto we're sure we're coming we don't know if they're coming at launch or if they're just gonna be pretty soon after like in season one or something but nine confirmed characters for launch so that's already almost double the amount that I got to play with in the beta there were three maps in the beta and we know of at least one more and it seems like there's going to be one or two more shown off before the game comes out, likely meaning I would hazard a guess about six for launch, which I'm perfectly fine with. I had a ton of fun with those first three maps, so getting three more, that would be more than enough for me, you get six maps total. Uh, more skins, more, just more of the game that I was already super on board with with the beta, so I'm... I'm very looking forward to that. I'm scared for the full release, actually. I said this on Twitter. Uh, I, I'm very scared for the full release because I won't be seeing sunlight when Crash Team Rumble comes out. I will be too busy playing the game. So 
<laughs> yeah. Like, okay, I have this long-standing moral code where I just refuse to pay for any of the consoles' uh, online subscription things. You know, PS Plus, Xbox Live. Uh, is it Xbox Live? Is that old? Am I, am I thinking of wrong? I don't play Xbox. Sorry if I'm getting that wrong. And uh, Nintendo Switch Online. There's a bunch of games I've completely missed out on because I just refuse to buy into those services. Those companies do not need the money. Like, it's, it's fucking Sony and Microsoft and Nintendo, three of the juggernauts of the industry. And in Sony and Microsoft's case, way bigger industries too. They do not need the money at all. Uh, Splatoon, never got into that because I had to pay for the online. Uh, Crash Team Race, Crash Team Racing. I almost said Rumble. Uh, I really like, but I, I refuse to pay to play the online part. Um, I, I've, I've just never had a game come along that could be fun enough and worth it enough to break down that moral thing. Crash Team Rumble is that game. I'm, I am screwing over my moral code to play it. I will buy PS Plus to play this game. That is how fun it is. I know that makes me a bit of a shill, but I don't care, man. The game's fun. I am looking forward to playing it sue me. Oh, and while we're talking about Rumble, uh, uh, please go and check out that little lo-fi track Toys for Bob released about it on their channel. Oh, it's such a bop. It's, oh, it's so good. Now, the next thing is going to be quite cute and fun, because uh, the other day I asked you all for some questions, because uh, that's something I'd like to get into. I mentioned at the start of this that Nick Natter, I want to be something of a, a host for me to chill with the community, you know, in a, in a more casual way, uh, and this is this is a way to do that, this is something I want to keep up, this is, this is a way for... I was about to say for us to get to know each other, but that starts getting into some very parasocial territory. Uh, Q&A time. Do you like chicken nuggets? Uh, yeah, I, I like them fine enough. Uh, they're not my favorite, but they're all right. You can't really go wrong with chicken nuggets. Lol. What is your favorite movie? Ah, uh, it's gotta be Hot Fuzz. All World's End. I go back and forth. I, I think Hot Fuzz slightly edges it out. That movie's just so tightly written and funny. So funny. I've, I've never... The, some of the jokes never get old, man. The entire Cornetto trilogy is great. Uh, you owe it to yourself to watch those many times. You will miss stuff on your first through on your first few watches. Uh, they're so good. They're so very fun. Hot Fuzz, my favorite movie, with with World's End as a very close contender for second. So yeah, there you go. What did you think of the Mario movie? And when will you make a review about the Mario movie? Uh, I lumped these questions together because they're kind of asking the same thing, ultimately. Yeah, the long and short of it is, I like Mario. It's it's a fun movie. It's a very basic movie uh, to its detriment. It's way too basic, but I like it. That's, that's a simple version of my thoughts. Obviously, I have a lot more, a lot more little details, a lot more suggestions for what could be improved, a lot more little critiques that I will be getting to eventually in a much bigger video, but for now, yeah, that's, I like Mario enough. It's, it's so much better of a video game movie than Sonic, and ultimately, I am okay with the existence of a movie like this that is very low on substance, but the, that you can still just enjoy on the merits of its visuals and uh, soundtrack. That's more than Sonic, so I'm, I'm okay with its existence. It could be more, but I, I don't hate what it is. As for when I will make a review, uh, I've got some other projects I want to get out first. Obviously, we've got the Frontiers review ever looming, and I I'll touch on this more in a minute, but there's one other major project, and then I should get around to Mario. So, before this year is up, you should have your big Mario movie review. Uh, that's the best answer I can give you right now. Mr. Icon X coming in with three questions. Who or what inspired you to make YouTube videos? 
Uh, I don't know that anyone necessarily out and out inspired me. I think it's more just a case of growing up with YouTube and seeing so many others make videos on various topics. So then as I got older, wanting to express thoughts on various things, like Sonic mainly right now. Uh, and because I grew up in a culture where that kind of thing is done on YouTube, I did it on YouTube. Obviously I have a lot of inspirations now, uh, B-Mask <laughs> being one of them, I brought him up before. B-Mask, love me some B-Mask. Uh, there's a bunch of others that I sort of phase in and out of how much they inspire me. Uh, uh, maybe I'll make a more concrete list one day, but I've got a few inspirations, but yeah, as of in terms of who inspired me to start making videos, I don't know that there was any one inspiration, more just the culture of the website. What is your favourite gaming franchise? It's Skylanders, man. I, I, I think I've brought this up like once before. It's Skylanders. I adore Skylanders. Part of it is a nostalgic connection. I grew up on that. I was playing Skylanders when I was like 10, but... I replayed Swap Force recently, I got it for the PS5, uh, or PS4, playing on the PS5. They still hold up, obviously they're simple little kiddie games, like, you know, don't go in expecting fucking Devil May Cry or something. But for what they are, they're really quality, they're really nicely made, they're very funny, they have a, just a wonderful sense of charm and character. I love that franchise. The developers are all great people, I've seen nothing but good things about them. It's, yeah, I have a ton of goodwill for that franchise. I am very excited for when it inevitably returns in the future because it made way too money, uh, way too money, way too much money to stay dormant forever. It's going to come back at some point uh, and I anxiously await that. Uh, yeah, I love Skylanders. I'm absolutely going to get further into why someday. Not for a long while with that one, but... Yeah, love Skylanders. That's my favourite gaming franchise. What are your true overall thoughts on the state of Sonic the Hedgehog? I don't know why you put true. I, I've not been lying in my videos. I, I'm i pretty truthful with my thoughts in those. At least at the time, because then you get something like Sonic Movie 2, where I make a big review saying, oh, it's actually kind of good. And then in a few months I realise, oh no, it's almost as bad as the first one. Whoops. But no, I mean, I'm sure you guys can pretty pretty much tell my overall thoughts on Sonic. Financially, 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 and in terms of like pop culture relevance, it's doing great. I'm very happy for it. The movies, for as much as I despise those abominations, they did drag him back into the public consciousness and he's only benefited from it. Uh, more and more people are trying them out, more and more people are getting into the franchise. They're getting into the franchise through some bad products that are tainting their vision of what Sonic can be. You get a bunch of people coming in from the movies being like, Oh, he should be this uwu wholesome little guy. And it's like, Oh, Paramount really fucked your perception of Sonic, didn't they? But generally, I'm happy with what the movies did in terms of bringing people in. The products that we're getting could be a little bit better. Uh, Frontiers, I'll save my overall take on for the video. I don't outright hate it, that's all I'll say. I don't love it, but I don't hate it. it that's more, it's more nuanced than that, but yeah, I, I don't love it or hate it. I'll, I'll save that until the review. The movies, I am not even going to say anything about. You all know my stance at this point. Uh, Prime, really, really not vibing with that. Um, it's not quite movie levels of bad, but it ain't far off either. I'm mildly dreading seasons two and three of Prime. I'm really not like in Prime. And then Origins was like, it was fine for me because I just used it as a vehicle to play the classics for the first time and if that's all you want out of it, it's fine. But all the little nuances that people who already knew the classic games got upset about, yeah those aren't good. Like there's a bunch of tiny little issues that could have and should have been solved. Uh, I am still convinced to this day that all the little cutscenes for the games were hideously rushed. Uh, watch my video about that. Um, and they're doing some really scummy pricing stuff with Origins Plus. They're including a bunch of features in the game that I guarantee you were planned to be in there from the start. They just didn't include them so that they could rush out base Origins and charge people for that. And then they could release a separate Origins later on and charge people again from that. Some really dog shit business practices going on there. So I guess my overall thoughts are like, it could be better, but it could be worse. He's gaining some momentum again. Oh, the dreaded word. Oh, the dreaded M word. He's gaining some momentum again in the public eye, which is always good to see. That's going to lead to more budget and 
uh, you know, that's going to lead to higher quality in the future, we hope. Uh, but the actual products that are getting us there, we need some major improvements in a lot of areas. And the thing that does worry me is Sonic is starting to get back into the position he was in in the 90s and the early 2000s, you know, actual big recognized gaming icon. And as soon as Sega messed that up, he fell off pretty hard. I don't know if you recall it. It's the game that's still used as a punching bag to this day. So, mmm, because Sega doesn't really learn their lessons. They've continuously proven time and time again that they have not learned a goddamn thing from 06. So, the bigger you are, the harder you fall. I'm, I'm a little worried we could get another 06 in the future, but... That's fear-mongering, because I'm a major pessimist when it comes to this franchise, but overall, things could be better, things could be worse. I'm... yeah, that's my take, I guess. Uh, we have two other questions. This is... this is definitely not audio. I'm recording uh, several days later, because I got two new questions in. Uh, you two are lucky that I was still editing the video and was able to slip this in. Sorry if anyone else has asked the question since uh, these two. I'll, I'll get to it next time. I, I can't. Anyway, uh, sorry. Not sure if you explained this before, but why the name Nick Knock? And what necessarily is the character that is your icon? Well, the character, I had a whole section earlier uh, explaining the character, so I would imagine that has answered your question enough. Yeah, I had a whole spiel about the redesign and whatnot. I I would imagine that satisfied you. If not, he's just a little gooey gremlin person. I, I would imagine he's made of some weird yellow goo. I don't know. I haven't thought about what he is too much. He he is just the little Nick Knock guy. I I haven't really put too much thought into it, must admit. As for why the name Nick Knock, that is a mildly funny story. So I had this channel fucking years ago in like 2016 and I was called uh, random fun stuff then very original but then I wanted to do a big rebrand and you know, actually do something with the channel uh, and at that time that was right around when TikTok launched and you had all the youtubers like talking about TikTok and all the, the cringe kids on TikTok uh, and I literally just thought oh TikTok but replace the T's with an N sure why not uh, yeah, and that's how you got Nick Knock. So thank the uh, the Chinese government that's spying on you with their with their weird little app for getting the name that you know and possibly love. Too bad Waluigi time. That is an amazing name. Uh, has three more questions. Uh, you and Mr. Icon X are bringing it. Which movie is better, the Mario movie or the Angry Birds movie? Probably Angry Birds. I haven't watched that in several years though, so uh, I'm, that's a tentative maybe, because I need to rewatch ideally, but I have no real interest to. I, I don't care about Angry Birds too much. I mean, they're fun movies, but I don't care about them too much. Uh, but from what I recall, that has a semblance of like a character arc and a bit of story. Nothing crazy. You know, much like Mario, it's just a simple, fun little... A video game adaptation movie, but I recall it having just a bit more substance than Mario. So as a movie, like which movie is better? Angry Birds. There's a better movie. Uh, in terms of which movie I prefer, Mario by a country mile, just because I like Mario more than Angry Birds. What is your favorite Mario game? I'm sensing a bit of a theme here, combined with the fact you have Waluigi in your name. I, I get the sense you might like Mario. I, just c call me crazy, it's just a hunch. Uh, my favorite Mario game, Odyssey. Uh, yeah, I tried, because I, I was one of the suckers who bought 3D All-Stars. I know, shun me burn me at the stake. Burn the witch! But I got the 3D All-Stars, tried 64. I, I just couldn't get into that one, man. That's a bit too early in gaming. We didn't have some of the luxuries that we have today. It's very hard for me to get into personally. Sunshine I found alright from what I played, but I just never put much into it. I should probably give that another go. Galaxy I really enjoyed, but I only played like the first world, I think, and then I just kind of stopped for no particular reason. I think that was around when I got my PS5 and then Crash 4 and that became my favorite game of all time. So yeah, I kind of just switched from Galaxy to my favorite game of all time. But Galaxy I did enjoy. Galaxy 2 haven't played. I haven't played a lot of the 2D ones, but they're all right from what I know. But Odyssey, that one's, that's my favorite. I've put hundreds of hours into Odyssey. It's got the look, it's got the style, it's got the music. I, there ain't much I don't like in Odyssey. I probably top five. Yeah, probably top five games. I 
I'd replay Odyssey in a heartbeat. Love me some Odyssey. Who is your main in Super Smash Bros? Oh god, I haven't played Smash Bros in like two years. I The last time I touched it actually was when Steve came out. I, I still haven't unlocked Sora technically. I bought him because I got the little fighters pass thing. But yeah, I haven't played it for him to unlock in my game. So I'm not the best person to ask on that because not only have, has it been almost two years since I played Smash Bros, but um, I was never the best at it anyway. It, like, I like it. I like Smash Brothers a lot. It's just, um, you know, there's far better people who could give you a far more nuanced answer. Uh, I remember enjoying K. Rule a lot. He was fun. Uh, I, re I remember liking Steve, actually, and Banjo, the two Microsoft reps I had a lot of fun with. I think those are my main guys. I, Again, I haven't touched the game in, like, two years, and I've been occupied with so much more that it has completely left my mind who the fuck I mained in Smash Brothers. But uh, those are the three that pop up when I try and recollect that question. So tentatively, K. Rule, Steve, and Banjo, probably. Piranha Plant I remember enjoying as well. Yeah, I, sorry, I don't have much of a better answer. That's that's the best I got. Thank you to for the questions. Uh, yeah. Now, I mentioned it with Mario a little bit back there. But uh, yeah, let's talk about the future of the channel a bit. You know, you guys have stuck around long enough. I don't know how long the video is, but I have been recording for an hour and a quarter now, so that's fun. Because I've had a pretty solid roadmap in place, at least mentally, since I, since I committed to writing the Frontiers video earlier this year. Uh, so I'd like to share a bit of that with you, give you an idea of where things are going, what's in the pipeline, all that kind of stuff. Uh, surprise things like Ant-Man or the Mario trailer, I don't really account for because I can put those together pretty quickly. They only take a couple weeks, uh, so so it's not like a super big change in plans if something pops up like that that I want to talk about in a quick thoughts. Uh, I've got a couple of those, not necessarily quick thoughts, but just little smaller videos on topics. Uh, tossing around in my head that I might try and put together. Uh, and of course there is that rumoured 2D Sonic game that if that comes out I'm sure I'll have something substantial to say about. Uh, but for the big like hour plus main videos that are covering things I care about and are going to be a real big like statement on those things, uh, I've got four of those tentatively planned for this year. Probably only three, given that this Frontiers one is dragging on a bit, and the fourth one is going to turn into a big project anyway, so it might bleed into next year, but four for now. <laughs> we'll see how long that lasts, but for now we've got four major ones, the first of which being uh, the Frontiers review, which you guys know about, it's on the way, not really going to say much more, I will get that out as soon as it's done, yeah. Then after that, we're going to be covering something that I actually, I don't want to reveal what that one is. Uh, part of that video is going to be the fun of the surprise of what I'm talking about. So I'm going to keep that close to my chest, but it, it's in a kind of similar vein to Mario and Sonic and all that. It's, it's not a gaming franchise, but it's a similar kind of nostalgic cartoony franchise. Uh, bit more niche. I, I don't know if, if, if as many of you will have experienced it, but hopefully you'll still get something out of it. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to say much more for now, but that's, that's coming out after the Frontiers review, and you should enjoy it. You should enjoy it. Then we'll go to Mario. We, after we get through Frontiers and this second mystery thing, we'll cover the Bing Bing Wahoo Man. Uh, and as I said earlier, got a lot I could say about that. That, that should definitely be at least an hour in length. I can't see that being any shorter. Uh, I've actually started writing this one uh, very, very loosely. There's not much written down, it's mostly just notes, but I, I have a kind of shape of the script. Same with that second mysterious one that I'm not saying about. I've got that sort of plotted out and I've got a fair bit written of that because I'm trying to keep up, you know, I'm trying to get those sort of going so that once I finish the Frontiers review, it's not like I have to restart the entire process, so that I've already got some momentum going with those two videos. You know, try and keep up some good pace after this Frontiers one comes out. Hopefully that's the idea at least, there's always complications that are unforeseen. But yeah, Mario and the second one are both kind of being made right now, kind of tentatively. And then finally, the fourth one that is almost definitely going to bleed into 2024 is a gigantic Prime review. Because yeah, as I said, 
got a lot of thoughts on season one already, and we still have 16 more episodes to go. I, I have at least an hour's worth of thoughts on what we've got already, so two more loads of that, it could easily bloat into another three hour video. I, there's a lot I could get into, a lot I intend to get into, uh, yeah, because I, I, right now, I mean, things could change depending on what happens in season two and three, but right now, I quite fundamentally disagree with a lot of the directions the show's gone in, and I want to get to the point of that. So, yeah, we, we, we might have another multi-hour behemoth on our hands that I'll get to, but... Yeah. So yeah, those are the four big videos I've got cooking up right now. I, what is he cooking? You got Frontiers, you've got a mystery subject, you've got Mario, and then you've got Prime. I'm gonna put my all into all of them, and I hope you will join me in not making them, but I hope you'll enjoy the videos, basically. I, it's only worth it if people actually end up enjoying them. If people hated what I make, I would do something else. I would make different content. So I hope you'll enjoy. I'm, I'm trying to make them really good. And that just about brings us to the end of this Nick Natter. Uh, thank you everyone who stopped by and given it a watch. This is obviously a new format I'm trying out. Uh, I'll adjust based on any feedback. Uh, but I think this will be good for the channel. It allows me to get some thoughts out about other topics that I might not dedicate a full video to. So you get more variety in what I cover. It also allows me to engage with you guys in a little bit more of a personal way, so you get some more insight, I get some more insight, who hard the whole world works. Yeah, it's gonna be cool. Uh, thank you to everyone who's joined me so far on this journey. That sounds very, like, Oscar's speech. Thank you to everyone who subscribed and who enjoys the videos, who's excited for the Frontiers one. I'm uh, making all of this for people's enjoyment. Partially to expel my own demons, yes, and my thoughts about stuff, but equally just as much because I like making stuff that people enjoy. It's cr crazy concept, I know. Anyway, thank you for watching. See you in the next one of these, hopefully. Although hopefully we'll get the Frontiers review out first, ideally, but hey, we'll wait and see. That's a big video. Uh, see you next time. I don't have an outro for this. Bye. <laughs>